Okay, well, I got a little time to spare here, and I'm going to do another review. So, uh, this is Family Appreciation Day, and, uh, let me see, it's basically, well, there's a couple of different plots running here, but, uh, the star this time is Apple Bloom, the stars this time are Apple Bloom and Granny Smith, her grandma, who we've seen a couple of times before, who's basically just a gag character, but now she gets her own episode. So, okay, and, uh, basically, like I said, there's a few different sections here, so, um, Okay, it's so breaking them up. Um, it turns out that there's a bunch of magic apple trees on this farm that grow zap apples every season. And uh, I guess, the, well, zap apples are these magic apples that appear after so many signs and after all this magic flashing of lights and rainbows and, you know, like, crows flying by, uh, storm clouds, howling timber wolves. You get it. But, um, alright. And then they appear for one day, and you gotta pick them all when they do. So they're really getting ready for this. And, uh, Granny Smith is the one who knows all about them. Uh, she is the one who knows all the signs, because obviously she's Granny Smith. She's been around the block a few times. And so she also knows what you have to do to, uh, prepare to make these apples and her, uh, Zap Apple Jam, which is a huge hit. So she is doing all sorts of actually really crazy stuff that this involves when she has Apple Bloom to help her because uh, Apple Jack and Big Mac, they're the heavy duty workers. So Apple Bloom gets to help with the uh, more uh, fine touches like uh, putting on a bunny suit and jumping over watering cans singing the ABCs, which uh, thank goodness that was supposed to be silly because that is really pushing it. But anyway, though, um, so yeah, they're doing this, all this preparation stuff. And Diamond Tiara, the bully, comes by with her dad, whose name is Filthy Rich. Okay, I mean, it's lucky he so happens to be rich, or else that would have been a really cruel bit by his parents. But, um, okay, anyway. Um, Diamond Tiara, she sees them doing this. Uh, Filthy Rich, I guess he's bought this uh, jam from Granny Smith before. This is what he does. He buys in, like, heavy stock, and he resells it. So, okay, so this is... They have, like, a business deal together, and, um, so he, he's seen it all before. He knows how this works. Diamond Tiara, though, she thinks she's just struck gold. She now has a lot of dirt on Apple Bloom, uh, how embarrassing, uh, she has, or how, how much embarrassing stuff she has to do, so. Okay, and Apple Bloom's actually not embarrassed at first. She's excited to be helping out, but Diamond Tiara is able to get, uh, get her to start feeling embarrassed, like, pointing out how... Granny Smith is Granny Smith, um, always forgetting stuff and all the weird uh, preparations that uh, she feels the need for for some reason. And then she starts scaring Apple Bloom to, like, oh, what if everyone else saw you? Oh, don't worry, your secret is safe with me. But um, anyway, though, uh, and sure enough, like, Apple Bloom does have to go into town with Granny Smith to get stuff. So, yeah, she starts to be a little bit self-conscious now. It starts to make her embarrassed. And, um, okay, and then, uh, second part of the plot, it happens to be Family Appreciation Day at this, oh no, um, I guess there's a Family Appreciation Day every week or something like that, so, I don't know, but, um, maybe it's just this month, but, anyway, uh, it's Apple Bloom's turn to bring in a relative to tell a story about themselves, so, she's, um, in kind of a, in a bind now, because Applejack and Big Mac, they're both hard at work with the zap apples on the day she's supposed to bring somebody in, so she can't just trade with somebody for some reason. And then Diamond Tiara volunteers Granny Smith, so... Okay, and the teacher just accepts Diamond Tiara's word that it would be okay. But anyway, though, so... Yeah, obviously where this is going, Apple Bloom doesn't want Granny Smith to come in and embarrass her with some kind of a weird story, so... Uh, and she... Gets the other two Crusaders to help her out, and we get a little bit of a hijinks portion where they try to help her get out of it. And somewhere they try to, uh, what? And that she's sick, uh, get Grant, um, do, they string Granny Smith up this is weird. For like a puppet show, they put, while she's napping, she, they put, um, open eye glasses on, like glasses that have open eyes painted on them, and do a puppet show with her, um, with Apple Bloom imitating her voice to tell the teacher she can't come in, but that Granny Smith wakes up at the last second and not noticing that she's being, uh, because of the crossed wires or whatever, she's being 
pulled up from one floor of the barn to the other. Uh, she tells the teacher, like, oh, no, I wouldn't miss it. I don't know what you're talking about. So, okay. and if nothing works, and then they try it. Um, I'll just the apples early, too, and the trees kick the heck out of them. But anyway, yeah, nothing works and um, until they, well, uh, more on that later. But um, anyway, Granny Smith does end up coming in to talk and, uh, well, um, what is it? Okay, well, yeah, then this is the next portion her story, which is all the way back when she was uh, part of a wagon train, I guess, sort of a pioneering family when it first came to Ponyville, before it was Ponyville, and uh, how she had a little adventure discovering the Zap Apples, and um, how they were granted the land they were staying on by Princess Celestia. <laughs> you see that, you're like, oh yeah, thousands of years old and everything, because she looks exactly the same. Like, okay, so, anyway though, um, uh, yeah, she had this adventure discovering the zap apples being chased by timber wolves. You just couldn't resist. Wolves made of sticks and branches. So. Okay, but, um, yeah, and then uh, we get the explanation, too, for why she does everything she does with the zap apples. Um, she started, you know, tasting this jam and uh, paying attention to the signs, too, of when the trees would appear and uh, went out of order there. Yeah, but yeah, she discovered how the apples grew, and then she started making a jam out of them, and she uh, just started, I guess through like trial and error, um, uh, figuring out what made the apples really um, bloom at their best, or how, like what uh, conditions worked best for these magic rainbow apples, too. That's the other thing they have. They look like they're not, they're anything but natural, but um, okay, no. Magic zap apples, she figured out how to get them just right for her jam, and you had to do all of this crazy stuff, because as she puts it, magic is as magic does. So, and uh, so many uh, ponies and such started coming in to try her zap apples that it, this was actually how the town of Ponyville was formed. So, okay, Granny Smith single-handedly responsible for that, and as the story is a huge hit, Apple Bloom uh, is totally amazed by her grandmother, um, Don and Tiara tries to put her down one more time, but this time Apple Bloom stands up for her, and, yeah, all is well. So, okay, the harvesting day comes, or the day to make the jam comes, that's a huge hit. Uh, it's even the best batch yet, and then Granny Smith passes it down to Apple Bloom. And, uh, well, the Apple Bloom's shaping up to be a great, uh, a great jam maker. She had her own specific phrase for that, as Granny Smith does, but can't seem to remember it. And you get to end with Diamond Tiara in a bunny suit being forced by her dad to help out. So, okay. Um, and it's been a whopping four episodes since I said this, but um, I thought that this was another really good one. It was um, just, like I said, Granny Smith, they took a gag character and they transformed her into a show-stealing gag character. She uh, completely owns every scene she's in. Just the energy, the catchphrases, the... Um, centric sort of enthusiasm, uh, just everything about her. And I mean, they could have, this could have become annoying. We've seen plots like this be annoying. Apple Bloom is embarrassed by her grandmother, and they could have been just like, uh, made that because she is annoying, because she uh, does stuff that nobody does, just to, like, how much can we beat down Apple Bloom? But not the route they go. Uh, it's like, it's partly just in Apple Bloom's head that there's a reason to be embarrassed about this. And it partly is understandable, but, I mean, you don't blame Granny Smith for it. She's just doing what she does, and she's hilarious. So, I mean, very, very well played here. They knew their strengths, they played to it. And then, and even the hijinks portion, because, I mean, just, like, what are, it's almost a blatant excuse for hijinks, or to how far can we push hijinks. I mean, that's, that can be very cheap very easily, but even then, it's, they, uh, just sort of legitimately have fun with it, like, uh, I mean, almost while they try to do it, Apple Bloom is sick, and Granny Smith takes the thermometer they ran under hot water, like, oh, what the heck is this? And then just feels her forehead and says she's fine. So, I mean, she shoots that down so fast. It's funny. And um, the trying to harvest the apples early and just how magic trees uh, won't cooperate when it's not the time. The trees, uh, they shock the bejesus out of Sweetie Belle when she tries to kick them, and then uh, the apples, they refuse to be picked when they 
try to just pull them off one by one. They pull them down until it stretches so far it slingshots them. And um, okay, and then even the Granny Smith marionette, but I don't know how they pulled that one off. But I mean, like, I, it, I mean, just like how uh, apparently, like, I don't know how Apple Bloom knew that would work so well, but it does, except for the fact that Granny Smith wakes up. And I mean. It's almost like surreal, uh, uh, yeah, just a surreal image of Granny Smith um, being like pulled about like an actual marionette and not even noticing. But um, it, like it went so wrong, but it didn't. And that, and how they finally get rid of her, they have Scootaloo dress up in a costume. And I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, we've seen that Granny Smith knows who Scootaloo is, so she somehow can't recognize her when she puts on a hat. But um, okay, yeah, she gives her a. A message saying a relative wants to meet her, and Gray Smith's all happy to see this guy, but it turns out he just so happens to have been coming over, so uh, that is Gray Smith actually, she leaves, they think they're off the hook, she shows up the next day at the school with the relative, so knock out there, and um, so yeah, just have a lot of fun with it, I mean, Granny Smith pushes this into uh, like the comedy gold, I guess, for this show, you know, she is right up there with Pinkie Pie on how uh, they take like a solid concept and fill it full of great comedic energy. I mean, the two of them should do a project together. They uh, both have it down, but um, I'm still not actually sure if I'd say it was really great or not, if not for the story that Granny Smith tells at the end. Because I mean, um, I, before that, you know, it was it's like comedic episode. I've said episodes were great for just comedy before, and uh, this one like in a lot of ways is right up there with them so i mean i would have had to see how it finished out if it would if it had just been all that all that approach to see if it could seal the deal or not but i mean you know the story that granny smith uh tells at the end it's just it's something else altogether i mean it's basically it's its own episode and it doesn't keep going like at the at the pace that the rest of the episode went at just like this good-natured energetic sort of thing i mean it stems from that, obviously, the episode was the setup for it, but I mean, yeah, this story by Granny Smith is almost like an episode itself, a little four-minute episode, and it's, I think it's a knockout, because, um, I mean, there's, well, one, it's just, it's an adventure, much like the ones that characters usually have, and it's a really good one, it's, uh, just, yeah, how, uh, she found these apples, like, why she needed to, uh, needed to do this, or the set up with the family, how they um been traveling together, I mean, just uh even the lot like the sort of uh, logistics she applied to the situation, like okay, the forest is dangerous, but so is starving. We're you know, we're trying to plant an orchard here but it doesn't grow overnight, so okay, if there are dangerous things in that forest, there has to be food, it's worth the risk. And uh and how then she discovered all of this and how it sort of reveals that present day Granny Smith's non sequitur behavior um, is a habit is all a habit of the contented veteran of the non sequitur that is life. But um yeah, I mean and she's really cute in this flashback too, just like how she's first discovering all of this, like, okay, if I put on a an army hat and yell at the glass jars that the apples are gonna be stored in, the apples somehow like that better. But um okay. But, and uh Okay, so yeah, it's just, it's a good adventure, and there's, um, a couple of background gag, uh, background touches they add, just like the look the mother of Granny Smith gives the dad when he kisses Princess Celestia's hoof. It's, uh, just, yeah, so it's, works on its own, and there's also, like, what's more sort of a sense of bittersweet to it, because, like, this is acknowledging that there was once a time when Granny Smith could have been our protagonist, you know, it, Especially with Celestia's appearance, there's sort of a sense of passing the torch to it. Just um, how, yeah, Granny Smith, she has her own legacy. I mean, we uh, we uh, went into uh, the rest of what she did when she was young. You know, she'd probably have her own great little series of adventures to tell in a whole other setting with whole other rules and stuff like that. But um, so okay, yeah, there's uh, there really is more to her. But I mean, but that uh, doesn't mean that, you know, we'd rather have her like that, because, I mean, there's, uh, now that she's grown up, she's this, uh, wacky old lady, you know, there's a point to her as well, she has, she has her role to play, and she's passed that, and it's really enjoyable, as this episode demonstrates, it's an enjoyable role, and she's passed 
the one she used to play down to her grandkids. And I mean, it's just, I mean, that's really what comes through more than anything. Like I said, they have uh, Celestia's appearance to sort of demonstrate that. They have uh, just how, I mean, everybody reacts to this, how um, she even talks about it. She's really looking back affectionately. And I mean, it's just, yeah, really, I think, really nice piece of storytelling here. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't think there's ever in just a good piece of world building, too, just how the town was formed. I'm sure fans uh, really enjoyed that. But, um, okay, so, um, yeah, I guess just it's something that we're probably not going to get, we're probably not going to get again. And it just, uh, it is, I think, one of the show's golden moments. So, yeah, that combined with a really good episode already setting it up. Uh, and then the reconciliation she and Apple Bloom have afterwards, where uh, kind of like in Suited for Success, Apple Bloom sort of gets away with her uh, mistrust of Granny Smith. Before, but, you know, that's sometimes how it happens. And, you know, that's just fine. Sometimes that's all it takes. You don't need a moral beat down. Sometimes you just need a gentle reminder. So, okay. All in all, I, uh, yeah, like I said, another really good one. Um, but, uh, I mean, I don't know if it, Makes Apple Bloom my favorite crusader, so because I mean I just I love the little quirks of Sweetie Belle, but um, of the two of them, Apple Bloom might have just passed her up for the uh, Crusaders' best episode. So um, I mean there was Beauty Mark Chronicles, but that wasn't really about them. But um, anyway, though, so very well done. And the next one is Baby Cakes. So that keeps the momentum building, and uh, I'll see you there.